Hi, I'm Glenn Everett. Living the dream! Jeremy, fantastic to be back here at Image Classic Cars. It looks like you've got a lot going on here, but tell us about your Camaro build. I believe it's finished. We've managed to finish out in the last uh, six to eight months. This one was probably one of the harder builds. We had to do rear quarters, floor pans, trunk panels. I've, pretty much most of the sheet metal on the car is brand new. And would I be correct in saying this car was going to start off as a concourse standard build, but you got a little bit carried away? It, it was going to be a concourse build to start with, and. Uh, as I was talking to people and uh, getting more involved in the build, it sort of evolved into more of how I wanted my Camaro to be than a concourse car. Tell us about the drivetrain, the power plant in this machine. Currently it has a, a 350 crate engine in it with a turbo 350 transmission, but as all men do, we're going to pull it and put some more horsepower into it. Come on, tell us what's the plan? <laughs> Currently we're thinking of going 427. Oh, that's the magic number, isn't it? It is, and I'm going to keep the car forever, so I've decided just to up the horsepower to something that I'm going to be quite comfortable with. Nothing like a 427, mate. It's, it's the pinnacle. Mate, you can never, ever have enough power. One of your latest builds here has caught my eye, the absolutely spectacular Blue 67 Coupe. Tell us about that machine. This, this was a great build from the start. Uh, we had a lot of free reign with this car. We knew that he wanted a, a, a straight down 347 to go into it and uh, more of a custom type build than a standard concourse type restoration. So it, it's been an exciting build this one. We have certainly delivered and just looking at the undercarriage on the car it is absolutely mind blowing. You could eat your breakfast off it. <laughs> it is, it is. It's one of those builds that uh, when you're doing the right hand drive conversion we put a new floor pan in the car and uh, we had to match the outside to the underneath for sure. Now the standout for me is the paint on this car. And you guys put a hell of a lot of effort into making sure that's right here, don't you? Oh, we do. This one took a long time to get exactly how you wanted it. It took us a long time to pick up paint colour. And uh, he came up with Kona Blue for the car. And uh, in the different lights, it changes colour. And in the sun, it just pops. Brad, great to see you. I've noticed another new build, this beautiful silver blue 66 Mustang Coupe. Yeah, we recently completed the car about uh, six months ago. The car to start with was in pretty bad condition. The entire floor had to be replaced, rear quarters had to be replaced as well, beaver tail on the back. She was the full ground up restoration. She got the 289 Windsor in there, C4 transmission and an 8 inch diff, disc brake conversion on the front. These cars, they're over 50 years old now, so they're getting hard to find from a donor perspective, aren't they? It is hard to find a good car these days. Everything can be fixed. This one was almost unfixable, but our body guys are that good, they brought it back. The customer wanted just a nice standard Mustang, and of course we ended up going a little bit further and she's pretty much concourse now. The biggest problem with these builds is where do you stop? You know, with a lot of the builds we have a budget that we've got to work to, but at the end of the day we want every car that leaves this workshop to be perfect. There's a lot of people building cars out there, so we have to make sure we've got a little bit extra there, you know. We've won a few trophies, we've won a few gold in concourse and a few silvers, but a few more in the cabinet would always be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I see the Eleanor is finally completed and running. Yeah, it's been a monumental build that one. She's finally up and running and perfect. Yeah, it's a great car. To some people the Eleanor is almost the pinnacle when it comes to Mustangs. Would you agree? Yeah, it's um, a pretty cool car. It's um, definitely my favourite build. Eleanor came to us as an already complete car, but uh, it was not up to our standards by far and the owner wasn't as happy when it finally arrived here from the States either, so initially we just decided to pull it down and give it a, a fresh paint job, but as of all the cars in this shop, it just turned out to be something a hell of a lot more. She ended up becoming a full rotisserie ground up rebuild. Tell us about the drivetrain on it, it looks very exciting. Yeah, it was supercharged 347, she goes pretty well, rests pretty hard. The atomic fuel injection or computer controlled in there adds a little bit of the new age stuff to it. Definitely gives you a good kick in the back, that's for sure. Sets you back in your seat. 
with the, uh, the rack and pinion steering in there and the TCP front end, all the suspension, upper and lower control arms, all tubular coilover shockers in there. She feels really great, really tight. With the movie Gone in 60 Seconds back in 2000 featuring the Allen Oil, it did start a real trend when it came to these builds, didn't it? Absolutely, yeah. There's quite a few cars being built, but uh, this one's so far the only one in South Australia that we know of and it attracts a lot of attention. <laughs> when it comes to a head turner, it doesn't get much better in Snang, does it? No, not really. They did share some elements with the GT500 Shelby though, didn't they? There are some touches there and they did use some of that as reference, didn't they? Yeah, the, the original car obviously in 73 was a Mac one, but then the later remake in 2000 with Angelina Jolie and Nicolas Cage, they used the 67 GT500 and modified it slightly. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, a little? Just a little bit, yeah. <laughs> driving it, this 1967 GT500 Allen Oil. Wow! <laughs> Amazing. It all dates back to the original movie Gone in 60 Seconds back in the early 70s. And then of course the remake in 2000 where they used Allen Oil at this time. What a machine. You know, Cinema Vehicle Service has actually designed and built the cars for the movie. And we had Nicholas Cage as Randall Memphis Reigns as the ex-car thief behind the wheel. They stole a whole bunch of cars and this was the one that was highest on his list. And he nailed it. And then had an epic car chase. Awesome stuff. This isn't the movie car of course, it's a full-blown replica. And an extremely good example of one too. You know, they built a few cars for the movie for use in various applications. And then they had the hero car, the car that Nicolas Cage himself actually drove in the movie. I'm told that that car at Meekham Auctions actually sold for a cool $1 million back in 2013. Wow, that's a lot of money, but a lot of car. Imagine what a trophy that machine would be to have in your lounge room or your living room on display. I'd love it, but I'd want to make sure there was a door there to get out and put the thing on the road. And when Cinema Vehicle Services actually designed and built the cars, they were definitely on the right path. The GT500 Shelby in that 1967 year model was definitely a fantastic base to use. Now I'm a massive fan of anything Carroll Shelby did and the Shelby brand and all of the models, but for me, the 1967 GT500 is pretty epic. They've got that mean looking front that looks like a shark, like it's gonna devour you, and I love it. So this car, or this design, is effectively that model, but on steroids, with even more muscle, if that is possible. So how does it perform? Let's just say, extremely well. <laughs> sound the thing makes too, the growl, the snarl, the exhaust note, that supercharger whine, the induction noise, it's got all the right things happening. It's pressing all the right buttons and ticking all the right boxes. Yep, this is my sort of car. The torque the thing makes from low RPM, two and a half thousand. You just stand on the gas, the thing just pulls and sits you back in the seat. Rev the thing up to around 6,000 to 6,600 RPM and man, is it moving at warp speed? And that's exactly what I'm looking for, baby. Yeah! <laughs> now, the original movie car had a small block Windsor crate engine making about 400 horsepower. They had suspension upgrades and brakes, of course, because they wanted the thing to handle well and smoke the tyres and perform well, too. You needed that excitement within the movie. This car here is a little unique though. It's an incredible build. The build quality is absolutely spectacular. But you have the 347 Windsor combination up front with a nice little positive displacement supercharger and one of the most recent self-tuned four-barrel style EFI systems. 
It's running 9 PSI and makes a cool 580 horsepower and nearly as much foot pound of torque. And that's what I call excitement. <laughs> it's got the five speed Tremec trans backed by a nine inch rear end. Now the interesting thing is this car here actually has a 411 gear in the rear end. That is super low and tire shredding territory. But with the five speed, it's still got excellent highway cruise. Tell you what, that really gets my heart racing. That Ford small block V8, that supercharger wine, manual, you've got to love that stick shift, the torque it makes. We've got that muscle car look, we've got that supercar performance, we've got the drivability and handling of a late model sports car, and we've got all the mod cons inside. What more would you want? I'll tell you what, there's only one more thing I would want, and that's this. And guess what? We've got it. The sound. <laughs> That's the sort of music I like. You'll notice I haven't even got the sound system on. I don't want music, I want engine music. And that's what counts to me. I go home dreaming about it.